Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Satisfactory. Today, we're going to continue working on our distributed mega base with the end goal being to produce 60 turbo motors per minute. Of course, this is my first time making a mega base within this particular game, and I've been having trouble visualizing just how much space the thing is going to take up. We're going to need over 2,000 machines, all told, when we're done. But what does that even mean? I don't know. I've never built one before. So, last episode, we built the heatsink portion of the build, and it has given me a much better idea of the overall size and just being able to visualize all the different details of the build. We had to pull resources from a pretty large area, and I had to do some fairly extreme engineering to get all the different resources to where they needed to go. But now that that's done, we need to address our power situation. So, currently, our power network is supplying a total of 6 gigawatts of power, and I've added up all the different machines we're going to need for our mega base, and I've multiplied them by their power drain just to get a rough estimate. We're going to need at least 30 to 50 gigawatts of power to run all of it, and so we need a bigger long-term solution for our power. That's what we're going to work on today. We started with these guys, the biofuel generator. They provide 30 megawatts of power, but you can't automate them, so they are definitely out. We've got some of these guys over on the coast in that direction. The coal generators, they provide 70 megawatts of power. And then there's these things, which we haven't used, which are fuel generators. They are double the power of the coal generator, 150 megawatts. But there's another option. We can make a nuclear power plant, which will provide a whopping... 2,500 megawatts of power per. Boom. 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 Yeah. Okay, boom. Any one of these three would definitely work. We could scale up any one of them to meet our needs. And, of course, we could build vertically and we could fall to our death from any one of these, which is a definitely required aspect for any decent megabase is to be able to fall to your death. But this one over here has an added benefit in that it can kill us a second way with radiation. I mean, do I really need to say anything else? These guys do not kill you with radiation. Therefore, ergo, we are going to make a huge nuclear power area. Ah, but now the question, where do we put our nuclear reactor facility? Each nuclear reactor requires 300 water per minute and one fuel rod per five minutes. And the fuel rods require a number of different ingredients. Maybe the best idea is to go back up to the map view and get an overall view of the world and where we might best put our nuclear facility. Ah, here we go. It's so nice to be able to plan things out from a perspective like this. So, nuclear reactors, they're going to require two different things. They need water, and they also need fuel rods. The fuel rods are going to need a smattering of resources, basically all the different resources in the game. But the important thing to keep in mind is that wherever we set up our nuclear power area, it's going to give off radiation, and that radiation is going to be there forever. That means we need to wear a hazmat suit anytime we're in the area, which means we can't wear a jetpack, which means getting around is much more problematic, and working in the area is also problematic. So right away, we can cross off our starter area. We can cross off the heat sink area. We can cross off the northern coast with all the oil that we're going to need for our supercomputers. And since we need a lot of water, we're only really left with two different locations. We've got the coast on the bottom left, or that lake on the bottom right. Both would work fine, but I think I'm leaning towards the lake on the bottom right because there is all that void. We're going to need a place to store all of our nuclear waste, and I think it's just going to be really cool. A cool idea to store our nuclear waste out in the void. So I think that's what we're going to do. I'm going to build a rail line, and we'll take a train out there, and we will start building. So 
So here we are. We've got a train with supplies full of different ingredients we're going to need to build with. We are just below our heatsink area up there. We have a lovely murky pool, and the basic plan is to put the water extractors directly on the water, obviously, because that's where they go. And then we'll put the machines in the middle that are required to build the nuclear fuel rods. And then up above, we will put the nuclear reactors. We're also going to need space for a few train stops. We will need to bring in uranium via train. And we'll also need a train to deliver the nuclear waste to our nuclear waste dump. But first thing I want to do is I would like to center our build over this lake. It is vaguely circular, this lake, with a weird divot. And I'm just going to build a big T-shape, basically, to find the center. And there we go. I think that looks good. We're going to have the uranium coming from off in that direction through that canyon. And the dump is probably going to be out in that direction, in the void. And the whole thing will be centered directly over the lake. Hey, if we're going to make nuclear reactors, we may as well stack them three stories tall, right? I think I've decided upon the number of 36 nuclear reactors for a grand total of 90 gigawatts of power. That should be well above any power demands our base ever has. Oh yes, that is starting to look impressive. 36 nuclear reactors. Okay, so the next step is to figure out all of the machines and their layout for making of the nuclear fuel rods. And so I've laid them all out here. In this game, when you deconstruct something, you get 100% of the ingredients back. So I find it kind of handy to create a staging area to put all the different machines we're going to need, like a bunch of puzzle pieces, and then we'll transfer them over underneath the nuclear reactors and figure out in what order and uh, how, how much spacing we need, all the belts, all that kind of stuff. But since I have them all out here already, I don't have to worry about having the right ingredients for all the different machines, because I can just get them by deconstructing them and then moving them over. So this is going to be more of an overview of the nuclear power setup. So I'm actually not going to go into too much detail about what's required for the fuel cells. We'll do that probably in a future video. But at this point, what we'll start doing is just taking them and moving them over. Hey, wait a second. Where did all those machines go? Oh yeah, I put them where they need to go. So here is a basic overview without getting into too much detail. We have to make nuclear fuel rods. We're going to have 12 manufacturers making our nuclear fuel rods. And they have four different ingredients. And so I've put the four different ingredients on four different corners underneath here. So there's one over there. Those are oscillators. There's one over here, which are control rods, I think. And then over there are the uh, the uranium component. And then over here are some beacons. And then we're just going to extrapolate backwards from there, creating the different components. So we'll create crystal oscillators and their byproducts behind them. The control rods will create all the stuff they need, the, the state tours and the AI limiters, all that kind of stuff. That'll get placed behind them. So here's a slightly more developed version of that. We're making AI limiters right there, and I'm lifting ingredients up and down from the preceding machines, and we're just chaining things together. Next step would be to hook up. Oh, I'm going to fall into the void. we got to hook up the raw ingredients. All right, so the arrangement of the machines is really only one component of the build. The other component is to make it look cool. And so I've added quite a bit of cosmetic structure to the thing. Of course, we could just make the whole thing float, but that's not very fun. I want it to have weight. I want it to feel uh, like a big, imposing structure. And so I've been looking at images of oil rigs and other industrial platforms and constructions and chemical plants and all that kind of stuff. So we've got a lot of foundations and supports and big beams and structures and grids and all kinds of crazy stuff. And we've got some detailing underneath the, the platforms that are holding the various nuclear power plants so that they feel like they're being held up, that they have weight. We have this big, massive structure. We've got giant beams. We've got two by two beams here. we got two by two beams here. we got beams back there. we got beams over here. we got beams and, and oh, those are columns. No, sorry, start over. We got columns. Uh, you know, you know what I'm saying. We got a lot of columns. We got a lot of beams. And um, 
Ooh, it's all starting to come together. I think what I may do is hollow out this center area where everything is coming out, and then we can fly through the middle. And then we're gonna have a space for all of the water pipes coming up in the back right here. They are going to ascend vertically via pumps, similar to what we did with the heat sink area. All the water is going to be mined up from the water extractors right down here on the bottom. Hey, did I mention we were going to have pipes? That's right, we are going to have pipes. Each nuclear reactor needs a pipe. That means we're going to have 36 pipes, 36 water extractors, a massive tower of water, 36 times 300, that's a big number. Oh my gosh, my jetpack. This is a preview of what it's gonna be like when there's uranium here, because I won't be able to use my jetpack. I'm probably moving too fast, but I can't slow down now. There's no brakes on this train. Did I mention we were gonna have pipes? Pipes, 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 pipes. So many pipes, 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 pipes. Mm-hmm. We got pipes. All right, I'm going a million miles a minute. I'm condensing hours and hours and hours of work into a few little clips. So let's slow down for a minute and let's talk about what's going on and give a basic overview. I will go into much more detail in a future video. This episode, I just wanted to sort of have a an overview of what's involved in making a massive nuclear facility. There is a lot, and I mean a lot of details to go into this kind of thing. We got nuclear reactors underneath them. We've got all the machines making nuclear fuel rods. Every one of these nuclear reactors needs 300 water per minute, so they each have a water pipe, and that water pipe leads down and is lifted up via pumps. It leads down to where the water extractors are on the bottom. And then they need a fuel rod every five minutes, and that's what all the machines underneath are making. And we're bringing in a variety of materials to make those fuel rods. This rail line right here is bringing in uranium, which is coming over from uh, way over where we made our aluminum outpost originally, which on the map is uh, in this swamp, basically. There's a cave behind a waterfall, and in there is some uranium. That's where we're getting the uranium, and we're getting a number of materials from close by. There are a few iron patches right here that we need for the fuel rods, so we're getting that there. There's a few copper patches, Let's see if I can see them. One of them is right up there, and one of them is right there. We have a Caterium patch, which is back there with the uh, the Copper patch. We've got a Coal patch, which is back there, tucked away. We're also getting a little bit of oil. This area has a decent amount of oil. And so there's an oil refinery down there underneath the, the coral reef, whatever that stuff is. So there is a little bit of oil back there. Then we also are bringing in quartz. We're going to bring in quartz via truck. And that is coming from way up there by the heat sink area. I could have used a train, but I didn't want a big infrastructure kind of competing with the coolness of the heat sink area. So we're just going to use a truck for that. And last but not least, we need sulfur. And quartz and sulfur are the least convenient. Well, I guess uranium is also inconvenient, but we're bringing that in via train. The sulfur is over by where the uranium is, way over, way over here, right by that, uh, right by the uranium actually, is the sulfur, and we're going to bring that in via truck as well. You can see I already plugged it in, it actually tells me that it's full of sulfur and ready to get delivered. All that stuff comes down here, where I've organized all of the different belts, and then the belts go across to all the different machines. Via these two little bridges right here. I'm going to try not to die right here. That'd be nice. All right, so we've got belts going across to all the different machines. And then once the fuel rods are made there in the middle, they get lifted up via belt. And then eventually, they output nuclear waste. The nuclear waste is around forever, and we can't get rid of it, which I think is a really cool, interesting game mechanic. And so I was very excited to make a nuclear reactor area. Our nuclear waste is going to get stored up in this train station and it gets sent on this rail line and sent way down there to our nuclear waste area. I'm hearing monsters. 
While we're at it, let's fly out and let's take a look at our nuclear dump area. Each nuclear reactor, if it's under full load, if it's being used at full capacity, it should output five nuclear waste per minute. And we've got 36 nuclear reactors, so that's 180 nuclear waste per minute. And it's going to be around forever. we got to store it somewhere, so we're going to store it out here. And if you're going to store something, you may as well store it in style. That's a little bit of a paraphrase from Back to the Future. We have a whole bunch of containers. There's a train stop right here. And then a belt connected to a bunch of storage containers. And then a bunch of storage containers connected to a bunch of storage containers. I haven't painted it yet. It does need to get painted, but otherwise it is mostly done. So let's say, theoretically, we're using all 36 of our nuclear reactors to full capacity, and they are generating 180 nuclear waste per minute every single minute for hundreds of hours. We should still have enough storage out here. I've tried to calculate and over-prepare and overbuild this place so that it never fills up. If it does fill up, obviously that's a problem, because then we're going to have waste back there, and the power might stop, and all kinds of things will happen that are, that are not very good. But honestly, we're probably never going to be generating 180 nuclear waste per minute because to do that, we would have to be using all 90 gigawatts of power that the uh, nuclear reactors there are capable of producing. I think they're only going to scale up as we start using more power, as we start building more and more of our megabase, and we're probably only ever going to need two-thirds of it. So that's what, 120 nuclear waste per minute? And we have way more storage. There's actually, I think, about 250 large storage containers chained together. We got train station right here. The train is going to come, stop, and it's going to offload via these freight platforms. Freight platforms offload onto a belt. That belt gets fed into a storage container. And then basically we just daisy chain all of the storage containers together. We make our way through this left side, all these containers here. They get transferred via the back there. There is a belt connection where they get transferred to these containers. We daisy chain all of these storage containers. We move from one side to the other and then back up to the top. And then eventually the line dead ends up top in the back corner right back here. So even if theoretically, hypothetically, if we ever do in practical use, fill up all 250 of these storage containers, I mean, it's never gonna happen, but if it does, I can just start building more. We can start building vertically upwards. So even though this thing is massively overbuilt, I have built into it uh, the possibility of building even more. This is where it dead ends. Actually, we can test it. Let's do a little test. So we need to go back down to the train station and I will dump some items into one of the freight platforms, and then we'll just run to the end, and if the items end up at the end, then uh, it's a successful test. Here's one of the freight platforms. I'll give it some concrete, and we'll run to where it's gonna end up. Now, once the nuclear waste starts showing up here, there's gonna be radiation, which means I have to wear a hazmat suit, which means no jetpack. So it's very important to have walkways built everywhere so that I can actually walk to where we need to go instead of flying like this. But eventually, those items should end up in this container right here. Oh, there they are on the belts right there. Making their way down. They must, they're going to be here in just a second. There they are. Okay, so the whole thing works. It filters through all 250 storage containers. We've got way more storage than we ever need. We should be mostly good to go. I, I, I still gotta paint the thing, but besides that, good to go. So anyway, this has been your crash course in satisfactory nuclear reactor design. You are now, just by watching this video, you are now a licensed nuclear technician and architect and ready to get your own reactor up and running. It's really quite simple. All you need are some reactors, you need a little bit of water, you need some other crap, you put them together with some belts, some foundations, and other structural type stuff. Maybe some walls and windows. And that's that's really all it takes. It's pretty simple. But seriously, I've spent a lot of time working on this. This build constitutes over a hundred hours of work. I couldn't possibly make it just one video. I do like to have my videos be relatively self-contained, but this is just too big of a project for it. So, this has just been a rough overview, a crash course, like I said. Next time, we're going to go into way more detail. We still have a few things left to do. Still got to paint the whole thing. I've got some detail work left to finish up. But mostly, it's finished. 
and we will spend at least a few episodes talking about it, figuring it out, plugging it in, watching it run, and troubleshooting any little problems that might arise. Oh my god, look at this. It looks fantastic already, I haven't even painted it. But that about does it for this episode, the first nuclear power episode for Satisfactory. From me to you, the overview, the crash course, but it's now over. And I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Whoa. Trippy, dude.